Now we're going to touch on a functional group that is a very important protecting group for both ketones and aldehydes and alcohols, and that's the acetal functional group. The acetal is a functional group in which we have a central saturated or tetrahedral carbon linked to two R groups. These can be carbons or hydrogens. That central carbon is also linked to two oxygen atoms through single bonds, and those oxygens are in turn linked to R groups themselves. And in general, none of these groups need to be identical. Not even the R groups linked to the oxygens need to be identical. We could have a methyl here, for example, and something completely different over here. To form an acetal, we combine a ketone or aldehyde with the general structure, say, R, C, double bond, O, R, and an alcohol. And because two things come together to form this functional group, we can think of it as a protecting group for either a ketone or aldehyde or the alcohol, depending on which of these compounds is our compound of interest in the course of the synthesis. The other beautiful thing about acetals, in addition to the protecting properties, which we'll touch on, is that the protection and deprotection steps are completely reversible and reversible in a very straightforward way. We can use acid catalyst to speed up the reaction in either direction, and in the forward direction, what we're looking at is the removal or elimination of water, whereas in the reverse direction, we're looking at the addition of water. So we can change, for example, whether we're removing or adding water to change whether we're going in the protection or deprotection direction. Let's think first about how acetals can be used as protecting groups for alcohols. The beauty of the acetal from the alcohol's perspective is that the acidic hydroxyl hydrogen has been removed in the acetal product. And so we can use an acetal as a protection agent in strong base, for example, where that hydrogen would be deprotonated by the strong base. With it gone in the acetal, this acetal can withstand strongly basic conditions. And very commonly, our way to set up an acetal if we're interested in the alcohol is not quite this carbonyl type approach. We often use something that kind of looks like an acetal to start with, an alpha halo ether with a good leaving group, say chloride, attached to a carbon that also bears an oxygen. And in essence, what happens here, we use strong base to deprotonate the hydroxyl group. And there's a, a nucleophilic substitution process that takes place. Here it's an SN2 reaction to generate the acetal. The result is called a mixed acetal because we have two different R groups linked to the two oxygens associated with the acetal. And often here, since we don't care about this carbon between the two oxygens, this will typically just be a methylene group or a CH2. Here we see two common examples of mixed acetals that are used as protecting groups for alcohols, ROH, the methoxymethyl ether or MOM group, which encompasses this CH2 and the OCH3 group, and the benzyloxymethyl ether, which encompasses this CH2 and the O, CH2, and phenyl group here, or as is commonly abbreviated, BOM. And so you'll see things like O-MOM for the acetal of methoxymethyl ether, or O-BOM, where the linked group is now the benzyloxymethyl ether. In a sense, you can think of oxymethyl ether as a shorthand for an acetal, a methyl acetal, or benzyloxymethyl ether as a shorthand for a benzyl acetal. Now, in, in many ways, using an acetal to protect a ketone or aldehyde is more straightforward. And the idea here, again, is to protect the ketone or aldehyde from the action of strong base at the carbonyl carbon. This carbon is a great electrophile in the original carbonyl compound, However, in the final acetal, that carbon is much less electrophilic. In fact, it's really not electrophilic at all and can withstand all manner of very strong bases. Typically here, we use the cheapest alcohol we can find for this protection process, the cheapest alcohol that will work because we really don't care about the alcohol per se, right? In the deprotection stage, when we want to get the carbonyl group back, we're going to remove it. And so things like methanol will be used here very commonly to create dimethyl acetals. Ethanol will be very commonly used here. You'll also see diols used, which will create cyclic acetals. So for example, ethylene glycol with two methylene groups and hydroxyl groups like this, it, it, essentially CH2, CH2, OH, and OH is commonly used here as well. And here to protect, we just make use of the solvent alcohol plus an acid catalyst using solvent quantities of the alcohol to drive this reaction forward toward the acetal. And of course, 
water is removed in the process, and this is commonly facilitated by the experimental apparatus using something like a Dean Stark trap. Now, one of the cool things about acetals is that in either case, whether we we're dealing with a mixed acetal from an alcohol and alpha halo ether or an acetal of a ketone or aldehyde generated using solvent alcohol in the acid catalyst, to get back either the alcohol or the carbonyl compound, all we have to do is use aqueous acid. And that can be as simple as H3O plus and H2O, where solvent quantities, a huge excess of water is used to drive the reaction back to the carbonyl compound and alcohol. You'll see some specialized conditions for removal of these mixed acetals. The details are at this link, so I'm not going to say much more about these. However, again, for our purposes, deprotection can be affected by aqueous acid no matter how you generated the acetal.